This is me as a baby. Um, I was not born as an artist. I never was. Um, also, you know, if you can see from my artwork as a child, <laughs> I started off like everyone else, just, you know, doodling. And I actually had some really funny artwork. Um, I drew cheetahs in the snow. And I also accompanied a love letter uh, with a howling wolf to my mother. Um, so one fascinating thing I found when I was at home a couple days ago was that um, there's this book that we compiled in first grade. And it said, and it asked us, what was the most important thing we learned? And I said, art is fun and beautiful and, and nice. And, and it's so simple. But today, I still believe that. I really do think that art is still beautiful and fun and nice. And now, there's a huge gap in my life from the point when I drew this uh, of my mother and when I drew that. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I was never really encouraged to draw, but I really liked it. So I pursued it. And um, I'm, I lived in America, and I moved to, to Jordan seven years ago. And I went to King's, and uh, in 10th grade, I was really shy. No one knew me. And then 11th grade, I wanted to take this AP. It was called AP Studio Arts. It was an AP that was not offered in the school. And I really wanted to take it. And my teacher at that time, my art teacher, she said, if you can draw this, then you can do AP Studio Art. And after a month of complaining and a month of saying this is impossible, I did it. And I, I made other artworks like this, and uh, this one, and also this. And <laughs> thank you. Now, um, it's obvious that you know I did. I wasn't born an artist, but I grew into it. And this is something I loved, and this is something I want to pursue. Um, I honestly believe, because of the things I've done in the past year, um, that has led me to apply to one of the most prestigious art schools, and that's how I got in. And that's why I'm here today, talking to all of you. And I used to define art as something that was beautiful, fun, and nice. But now uh, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, I see art as a metaphysical, esoteric expression of truth, um, viewed from the perspective of an artist from his natural world. It's complicated, but it really just means I still like art. And, <laughs> and this is what brings me to that. Art history has been something I've been passionate about. And my art history teacher is sitting here, and he knows this. And this is David by Michelangelo. And art history has been an important part of my life. And I've learned that art history is important because it has given that segue into change. It is a part of our history, and it can be a part of our future. And it's fascinating how an artist's decision to turn his brushstroke literally from this way to that, and similarly, with a turn of a century, how things changed. This artwork was a segue into something that was great. David um, stood as a pinnacle of human achievement. He was made, when Michelangelo made this, he made this so that he can teach the people, yes, you have potential. Now, another artwork is Eugene Delacroix's um, uh, Liberty Leading the People. This artwork was made during a revolution. In 1830, there was a French Revolution, and this painting is a political and social commentary on that time. Eugene Delacroix, he, he wrote to his brother. He said, if I cannot fight for my country, I will paint for her. And this speaks great volumes in terms of how art is put into a change in history. This painting is called Guernica by Pablo Picasso. And it is important, why? Because it was painted after he, Pablo Picasso, he painted this as a reaction to something that happened in history. He, this was painted because of the innocent uh, city of Guernica. It was bombed uh, in 1937. And he was outraged. He said, I don't want this happening in this world. So he painted this, and it's massive, it's huge. And you can see from it, you know, I wouldn't really like feel like I love art from it, because it's obviously very um, disturbing images. But if you were to look at this, and you'd realize his message, that I don't want this to be taught anymore. I don't want there to be pain and chaos and destruction because of warfare. And now it stands more as a symbol of peace. It stands, um, there's a copy of it put in the UN building in New York, and it stands there to show the people that this is not what we want anymore. Now, um, it is relevant, the three artworks I just showed you, 
they have been a segue into change, they have been a part of change, and they have been because of a change. And what I want to show now is the Arab Spring. You can call it the Arab Spring, the Arab Awakening, Arab Revolt, Arab Uprising, call it what you will, but do not disregard it. People have brought down governments, they have brought down dictators, and this shows the great amount of power that we have as a people. We, people said that this was not possible, and they did it. And now I want to combine everything that I just told you. Um, the importance of art in my life. I was very blessed to have it in my life. And I think that's why I have a goal and a passion. And art and history, it is definitely there. In this Arab Spring, combine, combine it all. And I want to create an art revolution. Now, this isn't in the sense that we get a bunch of artists and we draw a revolution, but more so that art have a voice. In the Arab world, we have this mentality that art is, isn't as important as like physics, as Ahmed said, and right now we must create that change. I want, we should teach the children of today that, it, that the pencil is not just used to write notes and to memorize those notes, but more so that the pencil can create something beautiful. We must teach the children of today that art history is a part of our history and not just a side. We must create a place for our children to go to and realize that, hey, you know, you might not be creative now, but at least you have the opportunity to be. And I want to leave you guys with a quote by Birnbaum, and he said that art has two faces, uh, one towards its time and one towards the future, towards eternity. And I think right now, more than anything, is a time for our Arab world to see that. And that's the idea that we're spreading. Thank you.